Welcome Moon Hackers. Today's Code Along project is in deep water. Let's get started. Our project today is a maze. These are heaps of fun and actually really quite simple to code. So for our maze, we want our little hero, the turtle, to be able to go through the maze, practice his recycling, practice turning off the lights and making it to earth all before the waters rise and take over. Let's see inside the project or remix it to get started. Don't forget to rename your project something that you are going to remember what the project is all about. I can see in my project that we have got several sprites here. Today we're going to code the turtle to move. We're going to code the recycle and the lights off and the earth to respond to the turtle making it there. To ensure that everybody can have a go at this project, the pre-coded part for the water sprite is already done for you. This was a little bit complex to keep it as a simple project, so we've already got some coding here. Our water sprite is coded to start down the bottom of the screen and to slowly rise throughout the project. This is done by using time and also by coordinating how far it actually moves each time. It also has a program of what to do if the water gets to the very top before the turtle has made it to earth safely. To start our project, we're going to work on coding our turtle. We want the turtle to set its starting location and to be able to move around the maze. At the moment, if we tried to move it, it wouldn't go anywhere or it would go through the black lines. So we're going to code it to ensure that it can't. Let's start with the event when the green flag is clicked. And we're going to give it a starting position with a go to an X and Y. At the moment, it's not in the correct starting position. So I'm going to code it to go to X205 and Y is going to be minus 140. Let's click the green flag to see where it's starting down the bottom. And now that I've clicked the green flag, I can see my water rising in the background. To ensure that our turtle is the right size for the maze and will not flip around on us, let's start by adding a looks block and set the size of the turtle to 25% to make sure it maintains that size. And we're going to use a motion block to set the rotation style to left and right. This means that as our turtle moves around, it's not going to flip upside down on us. For the next chunk, we're going to place all of our parts of our algorithm into a forever block because these parts of the code, we want them to happen throughout the remainder of the project. Now, each of these are going to be coding how we use the arrows on the keyboard to control the turtle. So let's start with an if then block. Now I'm actually gonna create mine outside the algorithm to begin with, just so I can make sure I'm putting it together correctly. Let's go to the sensing blocks and choose when the key is pressed. And using the drop down menu, we're gonna choose right arrow. So when the right arrow is pressed, we're going to get our sprite to face a certain direction and to move a certain number of steps each time. So in our motion menu, let's do a point in direction. And we're going to leave it as 90. 90 is facing to the right, which will match the right arrow. And we're going to move three steps. Now, three steps is a really small distance, which is going to help us make the movement look really smooth. Now, to ensure that our turtle cannot go through the black lines, we're going to add in another if-then block and put it underneath the move three steps, but inside that first original if-then block. So if, back to our sensing menu, it is touching the maze. So let's do the drop down menu and select maze. The sprite, if it's touching this sprite, we're going to tell it to go the opposite. 
So we're going to move minus three steps. So we've coded what will happen with the right arrow. We're going to code the left arrow next. Now I could drag all those blocks across again, or I can go the easy way and duplicate this piece of code. So I'm going to right click my mouse, click duplicate, and I want it to go right underneath that first one. So if we've got the right arrow here, let's do the left arrow. So we're going to change the sensing block to now select the left arrow. And we're going to change the direction, which will go to minus 90. So now we've got, if the left arrow is pressed, point in the direction to the left and move three steps. But if it's touching the maze, bounce back. Okay, that was a pretty easy change, wasn't it? We need to do two more of these so that we can do the up arrow and the down arrow. So let's duplicate that algorithm again. Scroll down a bit. So this time, if I choose or click the up arrow, let's change our direction. It's going to change to zero. It's going to move up and move three steps. And if touching the maze, bounce back. And our final duplication, we'll pop it underneath, is to use the down arrow. And let's change the direction to be 180 facing down. So that now will help control our little turtle. We've got quite a big chunk of code here. So our final step is to drag that and place this inside the forever block. So forever, when we're touching the arrows, these are things that are going to happen. Let's test our code. Oh, it's working. I can't go through the maze, but I can manipulate my way around the maze. Now we're going to code some conditions for the game. Let's click on the recycle sprite. So the recycle sprite is going to be placed somewhere on the maze. And we want our turtle to be able to go and collect it. So we're encouraging people to recycle. Let's start with the event when the green flag is clicked. We are going to ensure that it's going to be the correct size. So let's go and set the size. And we're going to pop that to 25% just like our turtle. And we're going to set it into a starting position. Now, it's up to you where you would like to place the recycle sign, I'm actually going to put mine over here. So I'm going to drag it into position first and oh, let's click the flag just to ensure it's the right size. There we go. Now my coordinates are these two down the bottom here. So I'm going to set that into the block for its starting position. Our next step is to bring over a forever control block because we want this to happen through the remainder of the project. And we're going to code it so that if this sprite is touching the turtle, it's going to disappear. Let's bring across an if then block because this is one of those decision choices. If it does, let's go to the sensing menu and choose touching the turtle sprite. If it's touching the turtle, and then we are actually going to begin by sending a broadcast. So a broadcast is a message that this sprite will send to all the other sprites and the other sprites are either coded to respond to it or they just ignore it. So it currently has a broadcast of game over, which is used by our water sprite. We are going to create a new message and we're going to call it water down. So the idea here is if they collect the recycling icon, it will actually drop the water levels a bit of it, showing that when we do recycle, we make an impact on climate change. So let's pop that in and then we are going to hide our sprite. Now, if at some point in the project we hide the sprite, we need to make sure that we have it show at the very beginning when the green flag is clicked. So don't forget to add this in up the top there. Fantastic. So 
We've got our little recycling one ready to go. Let's click the green flag and test our project out. I'm gonna zip my little turtle around. Can it collect? And let's watch the effect. Yes, it worked. I managed to collect the icon and the water levels dropped a bit, which was great. Of course, I'm not going to succeed now because I haven't coded the next part. We are now going to code the second sprite lights off. The sprite is going to have almost identical coding to this algorithm. So again, we can click into lights off and drag all those blocks again across again, but I am actually going to copy this whole code across. And I do this by holding down my mouse button, dragging it over the top of the sprite. And when the sprite's wiggling, I'm going to let go. And now if I click on lights off, that code has been copied across. Now, there are some key changes we need to make. If I was to press play right now, the recycle and the lights out would go to exactly the same position and that's not what I want. So let me think about where I want to place this one. I'm going to put it in this little section just here. I'm quite happy with the size. That can remain exactly the same, but I am going to go and change the X coordinate and I'm going to change the Y coordinate to match what my sprite is telling me here because that's the exact position that I want. So when the green flag is clicked, it will show on the screen. It will set its size, go to the starting position and forever, if the turtle touches it, it's gonna broadcast again, water down. The water will receive that broadcast and drop down and then it will hide. I think it's time to test. Okay, in the right position. I'm going to skip the recycling one this time. I'm going to go straight up to the lights out one. I collect it. Oh, yes, it worked. It's hiding and the water dropped. Time now to code the earth. Now the earth has exactly the same algorithm again as the lights off and the recycle, but we are going to make some little tweaks to it. So go ahead and drag that code across and drop it onto your earth sprite. And then let's go over to earth. Okay, there are a few different changes that we want to make here. The first change is the size. We want the earth to be at 40% needs to be bigger than the other sprites to really stand out to know this is where we're heading to. We do have it in the instructions at the beginning or it's something you can add into the turtle to say, I'm going to earth, but we want that to be a bit bigger. Now its starting position is gonna be at 100 on the X, core, X axis and 70 on the Y axis. So let's get it clicked into position. Here it is sitting up here in the maze. Now, when we get our turtle to that earth, we don't want to broadcast water down because the water will then continue rising. We want it to be the end of the game. We're going to select the game over broadcast, which our water knows what to do with. And we don't want the earth to hide we want the earth to actually say something. So let's drag across a say block and we might say, you saved me. And we'll leave that up there for about five seconds so we can see the end of the game. I'm ready to test this out and see if it works. Let's test out the game. I'm gonna go around. I'm going to make sure I go and recycle because that's positive for my environment. I'm going to go up and I'm going to show that I turn off the lights and I'm going to make it over to Earth safely. And yes, I have saved Earth. Fantastic. So that there is the end of the Moon Hack project, but it's not the end of your coding journey with this project. What can we do to improve it, to make it better, to make it more obvious how to play? 
there are some options that you might choose to create a second level of the game if they get here safely. If you click on the maze sprite and jump into costumes, you will notice that there are two other costumes of mazes which get progressively harder and trickier to go through. So you might actually enjoy doing some new levels. The aim of this project is to help people learn that our sea levels are rising and that we have a role in playing to slow down this happening. We can do that through things like recycling as much as possible and trying to conserve our energy. Make sure your trusted adult has registered for you for Moonhack and you receive your certificate for completing the project. Congratulations and everyone, happy coding.